Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of World End Economica Episode 2. My name is Fudd and let's get straight back into the story. I gave a slight sigh after I left the dim apartment complex from which all the cheerful voices came. People didn't change deep down. It was a different story when we were watching the core. I took off walking, dragging my foot as I hobbled along in my crutches. I couldn't even go to a steady pace, much less a daring leap. Paralysis and habit were more common than a cold. It was incredibly difficult to get rid of them. Luna Service Humanitarian University, Law Department, Legal Studies, Second Division. This was an MBA university and department I was unfortunate enough to sneak my way into a year ago. Because the Second Division was all clean classrooms, I'd never actually been to a campus. It was near Luna City University, which produced the leading intellects in Newton City. But I couldn't imagine going, it was probably filled with wealthy female terror migrants making a clamour. The increase in population and the influx of school aged individuals coming from Lunar Surface had caused the new education institutions to pop up. But didn't, then there would be no way for someone like me, who hadn't even completed elementary school, to sneak in. It was a lot of hard work, and I did have two Lunar Surface City College students tutor me. Reese studied through theological history at Lunar Surface, Lunar Surface City College, and so I had a doctorate in engineering. It probably would have cost a fortune if I asked a firm to get me a tutor. I wasn't sure which field to get go into and end up in law. To succeed on a lunar surface, you either need an MBA or you need to be really good at maths. The point was to study aspect things using pen and paper. That's because the more you touch something in the real world, the more friction slowed it down. The guy making semiconductors in a factory is like a guy going down a road on foot. The guy directing that factory is one going down it in a car. The guy making the blueprints of a semiconductor being produced in a factory is a guy going in a jet. The guy managing a group of experts drafting the blueprints of a guy riding a space elevator. In those terms, a lawyer was on the top of middle management. You had to hire others to strike it big, but you still need paper pushers in order to make a decent amount. Especially on the lunar surface where companies regularly spark battles over intellectual property rights. That's why the last means to escape for selfish individuals who failed in maths or those who want money but don't really want to study rigid business laws was in the legal studies department. Risa and Soro probably thought about that as well. My dream four years ago was to save up more money than anyone ever had and use that money to stand on an unexplored world. That dream collapsed on me, but being a lawyer wasn't a bad second choice. The two of them probably thought this was how I'd work things out. Adorned with a business suit and golden cuffs. My short hair combed back and pounding away at someone with words like I was trying to kill them in a courtroom was make, to make a living. For me from four years ago, probably wouldn't have thought that this wouldn't be too bad. In reality, it was much different. So I still thought that was why, but I made it clear to Risa. This was around a nightmare celebrating my acceptance into the college at 22nd Block Church. It wasn't even comparable to Chris's today, but it was still lively. When I told her I'd entered into legal studies, Risa embraced me without a word. After doing that for a while, she let me go, and then laughed with a hint of sadness in her voice. You've really grown up. Even if her real attention was just saying, there were more people, Risa was still Risa after all. Being treated like a child was embarrassing, but it still felt pleasant. That's how cold the lunar surface was after all. That was also kind of why I chose to pick up law. I no longer even thought about wanting to stand on an unexplored world. Even if I do go where no man has gone before, so what? If there's someone I want to keep dear to me, but I'm prepared to turn my back on my untrodden world. And this time, I'll grasp that hand firmly and not lose sight of what is important. It's just that I don't know where that person is right now. I'm sitting in the dark as to where Hagana ended up. I don't even know if she went to terror or stayed up here. Which was even worse at worse than me giving, giving, a, giving a search. But recently she hasn't been speaking about it. I, on the other hand, feel like my hand cramp every time I pass by a girl with black hair. As I, ended, as I stared up in the sky, I walked to reach a building that could easily rival the gloomy 22nd block apartments in terms of dirtiness. So it says Blue Moon International Building, Lunar Government, the 4th City Block Branch Office. Oh, that was a horrible name. Lunar Surface 4th Outer District 7th Block Agency was posted on the entrance. 
and a cubicle as well. Making my way past the first floor filled with people filing complaints and paperwork, someone called out to me abruptly when I entered the room far back in the third floor. Oh, you're already back? I didn't think anyone would be here, but a sombre, long-haired girl was around to greet me. Well, she's nice. I already submitted your leave slip. With a face like mine, it's hard to stay at a party. I said everything with a straight face. It perplexed quite a few people when I first met them. This girl was one of the most perplexed. Her name was Raina. She was both my working scholarship, director superior, and supervisor was said to start scholarship. Whether or not receiving my meagre salary, if any at all, depending on Raina's assessment of my work as I studied whilst living in the dorms. She was a kind who wore skirts made of cheap materials that reached down to her shoes. You had a shawl or cardigan and a long black hair tied up. I'd say she's quite my type, actually. Everyone from Terra tells me this was a typical image of a government employee. I was inclined to agree. Here there are people who could earn a million more in the span of a single night. Depending on how much effort you put in, you get better odds of becoming wealthy on the lunar surface than on Terra. That was one of its biggest selling points. People who came here to work in government position, where your pay doesn't increase no matter how hard you try. You have a stupid individuals, no capacity of foolish and weirdos, burning sense of duty. You can say that Raina was one of them. I was neither one of those, nor neither a fool or an idiot, but something lower than a human. I also noticed the keyboard has a lot of keys on it. Is that a Japanese style keyboard, I wonder? I mean, look at her numpad, it's not a 4x4 or 4x5. Like as it's actually a 5x6. And. Um, yeah. So I got distracted by the keyboard there. I can't tell when you're telling a joke. When I tilted her head to her side and wore a troubled smile, but fit her more than Chris's fit hers. She's much older than me, but it would have been wise to say she's probably about the same age as Visa. Irena was very childish. She might have been cute if she was shorter, but since she was rather tall, it made her seem even dumber. That's mean. You're mean, Haru. I could have called somebody like her dumb. Half joking, half honest. Ever since you came here, you always put me in a binder like this. More importantly, why is nobody here? Upon being asked a question she probably couldn't answer, Rain looked around the room courteously and gave a troubled looking smile. Because it's lunchtime. Still ten minutes early though. Everyone gets hungry. I was annoyed with what she said, but it was pointless to get angry there. Those exceptional talent were regularly snatched up for better positions. As government officers were the absolute bottom, even if their academy academic backgrounds were fantastic, they end up being a nest of worthless individuals. This resulted in gathering of the most well meaning, clumsy or diligent people available. Like Raina, who could be either. Which is most overdue. Let's start from there. Not to worry, I already went over them. She smiled lazily. But I knew she had a bunch of work thrown at her filed under the miscellaneous. The government's building, Raina and I, her subordinates, were stationed and was established to handle the miscellaneous work for a main statistical office, as well as data from other branches to be passed over to bureaucrats. If you, you can never manually enter the data, if you've never manually entered the statistical data filed complaints into a terminal, you'll never understand this agony. I honestly wondered if I was really human. I was selfish and arrogant enough to insist I was human, so the ones who used to be impatient ended up taking care of it. A weak smile and a tired face, Raina repeated this monotonous work day in day out. When I first came to this office, I saw it was type of slow suicide. Even though Raina was an incredibly patient person, she wouldn't even be working like a slave like here if there was no purpose. The reason she was holding up in a place like this was because there was something she wanted to do. More importantly, there had been a few petitions circling around again. I was the only spurt of green in Rainer's voice with a grass like hue. You're doing it right. You should at least go to lunch. I'll buy something I can eat with my own hand. How are we go and read it read it? Rainer, who normally seemed like she would be blown away by the wind at any moment, had a sparkle in her eyes. I was handed with occupants of a goods that never seemed to run out, even though Luna's surface had had no resources. Rainer was originally contracted to file and check the various applications to the government office. Not the statistical data, 
Most of them were mundane applications, but some were often quite important. One of those was a subsidy application for a welfare group. The welfare group activities subsidiary system was said to be a hotbed for fraud. Oh, this is a bit too close to home for me. As unfortunate groups only apply for and receive subsidies illegally. We sometimes heard of government employees collecting bribes from time to time, but that's, that's unlikely. Even without sending a bribe, we aren't inspected in such great detail. Were there any looking real? Yeah, I'll say she's very nice. As Raina was about to stand up, she heard me and spoke with her hands to the back of a chair. It's that job to file one to one to da. Oh, that's true. We must work hard for those who really do need the funds. Raina stayed about with a cheerful smile. Let's try it so we can at least be champions of justice. She flicked her long hair so it probably grew out because it was too much of a bother to get it cut and left to buy lunch. The pain was meagre, there was no overtime, and the guys working were all terrible, so you could always expect a lack of liquor respect out of them. I remember thinking Raina must be nuts with how earnest she worked. Even though she's already halfway through her twenties, she might just not just, she might just not understand how the world works. That slow wittedness, almost to a level of illness, gave me some relief. Raina was similar to Chris, but Chris was one of those people who put energy into something of magnitude I never could. Rain on me with a hand was a kind of ditzy girl that even I could feel superior to. I could easily tell her to turn on the TV and look at the rest of the world, being able to check them and divide with fortune applications from the groups who really do need financial aid, was Charles play with this merciless lunar surface. But would anything come of telling Rain of this? Probably not. But I did want to feel pleasantly drunk on her previous words. Let's try so we can at least be champions of justice. I could become a hero. So I want to at least become a meagre champion of justice. That phrase was like beer. It was a sweet, intoxicating appeal to it. It carried to a similar bitterness. Wow, well, already? This is all? She blurted it out when she returned to a sandwich and was probably from a food card of neighbourhood streets. The ploy is all pretty standard, all figured out easily by looking at the phone number and address. Using a private phone service and fabricated address or something like that. That's right, I noted the phone numbers of groups that had received funds and ended up with quite a few duplicates. Terrible, I couldn't even do such a rudimentary check. She slumped her shoulders and said that, but this is inescapable. There was a serious lack of government workers and there were a few systems in place to handle such things. They couldn't just deal with each and every small denomination financial and aid scam. There are three, three types, only ones look right. Over here, we want to look suspicious and probably not that good. Just be certain, please call them and check. While taking a sandwich from Raina, I handed her some documents at the same time. Those which weren't used in private telephone services and fabricated addresses. Of most of those which were fraudulent, the bank accounts were given a reveal, but the phone numbers and addresses, whilst actually existing, were false. Even still, I might get lucky during inspection and receive financial aid. Last time, all seven of seven turned out to be bogus. She took him when she was accepting a poorly written exam, but I shared neither her sympathy nor her sentiments. Oh, but. She stopped herself as she picked up her phone from her desk. For some left for consideration, right? I paused for a moment before I replied. Oh, yeah. Thank God, it's been a while since I've actually gotten through your inspection. She gave me a warm, innocent smile. I'm on my way back to my desk, biting down on a chicken sandwich seasoned with pepper I bought with a few coins. She didn't seem to like my unsociable manner and began sending calls after documents I just gave her. She probably completely forgot about the sandwich she just bought. She was the type who forgets one thing while she starts doing another. I often see her take home dried up food she'd forgotten to eat with a disheartened look on her face. She would probably gnaw away with it and would never put like lodgings to a government lease out to her. It made me wonder about the sources of other people's happiness. Yes, yes, okay. When you got no idea, yes. Until I took a fourth call, I could hear a vigour, if only little, in her voice. I'd rather impress her she got so good at talking to a beating later. Um, after her first bogus one, she became discouraged from there on out. I thought it was amazing she lived at a point but that naivete. Well, it could be she was not going to get past this point. 
It's quite likely that in an office where most employers leave before noon and don't come back until around two, that she'll end up doing work that wasn't even hers. No. Why? No. No, thank you. She pressed the end button to close out the video call. Looks like the sixth one wasn't any good either. Uh, I can tell how depressed she was without even looking behind me. She was my superior, there was nobody else in this cramped empty room. So I had no choice but to say it. I'd like some coffee. Huh? She stretched out her slump over her back and looked up and turned towards me. You'll pour me some. There's no one else after all. My, how wonderful. I would like some very much, thank you very much. She said with a smile brimming on her face. I nodded and took a coffee beans and poured from terror an old fashioned hand crank grinder in my, de out of my desk drawer. Reese would taught me how to make the coffee. There were times I stayed here after work instead of returning back to the dorm to study, as electricity and heat were free. Coffee was one of a few pleasures to be had in a change of pace at most times. The reason I didn't make it for myself very often was because it was quite a luxury item and a meagre salary. And I'll finish up the calls until it's done. She said that with a smile as I got up from my chair. It was very quiet in the office. Sometimes the only sound was that of someone sipping from a coffee. I came back with coffee for two. Rena was, per usual, at the desk at the desk staring off absent mindedly. She was staring into a monitor which showed an afternoon programme she wasn't really watching. I had expected it. Interesting picture, eh? She said that while drinking a coffee. It still gets me down knowing they're all no good. I couldn't imagine what the fraudulent applications would affect Rena's livelihood at all. If anything, it felt like there was some point of pride to be had in rooting out evil champions of justice. So there's no reason to, for her to get depressed. She looks very worried though in that picture. I wanted to tell Reese that directly, or she'd get mad. But she instead smiled a bit and looked a bit embarrassed. I'm saddened by the even intentions for with Luna's surface. Given how beautiful it is. The profile of Raina's face as she stared blankly at the screen was insipid. She looked quite naive. I turned my back to my desk as I sipped on my coffee. Raina noticed me and looked over in my direction. There are still some things that need consideration today. Please don't get your hopes up. Why? Why? Do I need to say it? Uh, Able to get past your strict selection when it should be fine if I call them up. Strict. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it's more like they got over a first obstacle. Looked like Raina wanted to say something else, but she gave it up in the end. She turned her, turned back to the TV and sipped her coffee. You're quite amazing, Harry. Huh? You're able to see for all these lies while doing almost nothing. After all, I was checking them, I think they'd either misspelled something or didn't put down the right location for a place. I think that's important as well. <laughs> You're quite nice about some things, Harry. When I looked up, I saw Raina following her unkempt brow with a grimacing smile. How can you tell, Harry? I never catch him since I'm not that bright. How, you ask? It's not like there's a manual on this, is there? Or are there lectures and illegal studies? That miss. Nope. And how? She looked at me with inquisitive eyes. Most people stopped assuming every question has an answer by the time they were teenagers. Looking beyond Raina towards a show as I was watching, I responded. Intuition. Ah, no way. You can't notice a phone number from a phone, so it's by intuition. How can you tell it's suspicious if both a number and address are real? Really, just look. Raina appeared displeased, but her mouth was quivering. She didn't say anything as usual. She was probably asking me seriously as I and I shouldn't have just answered and I should have just answered her properly. If I did that, it made me start recording stuff I didn't want to remember. An application for financial aid was a kind of presentation explaining who wants how much, to what end, and where they were. During my teen years I'd looked at tons of these presentations. A program Raina was watching, but not really paying attention to, was just about that. 
everyone young and old was either in fall by that here on lunar surface with extreme wealth and disparity. I think that's amazing. So makes me think you'll be good at this. Raina said with a voice hinting that she hadn't yet given up on the subject, as she continued to watching a program. I know it was a famous woman with her trademark sunglasses and platinum blonde hair tied up. She held on to some type of documents as she blurted out something. A stock company information program. A stock company Prospectus was very similar to a financial aid application. An incredibly popular analyst who was known by as a guardian deity of her people's wallets was on the show. We were yammering on about stocks and making even people like Raina want to buy. Not at all, I'm terrible at it. Really? I think it'd be great, actually. How about some more coffee? You would like some? Ah, huh, please. She probably thought I was trying to change the subject. I was probably answering her for once. I wasn't good at the stock exchange. I really wasn't good at it. Probably a good point to leave it here. It's been a long episode. I could probably carry on reading the story for a bit longer, to be honest, because we're getting to a vital good part here, but I think we need to stay in the episode. So join me next time we continue. Bye-bye.